All right, friends, happy day five. Um, today I am documenting gratitude and I'm actually working on this project first thing in the morning um, because I'm documenting gratitude and I don't necessarily need a photo to document gratitude. So I'm working on this project um, first thing in the morning. This is what I had as far as foundation pages goes. I had this um, that I embossed like earlier in November, I was trying, I was practicing with embossing on vellum and I really like how it came out. So I have this thing that I embossed on vellum and then this is from Carrie Bradford Studio. It's from the Initially Digital set. Um, she released one that was just numbers, one that was like days of the week, months of the year, and then this one that was holiday themed and it was a giant G for grateful which I thought would be perfect for this story. So I have a giant G for grateful that I then uh, printed on my toner printer, ran through my make and foiled. So this is what I had as far as foundation pages went. And I'm gonna make like an interactive book type element um, to house my journaling. And then after I live, you know, day five, I'm gonna pick a photo of something that represents what I did for most of the day. I don't even know what this day is gonna look like because it's nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so I'm gonna pick something that represents most of the day and then I'm going to print that out and put that behind this vellum just so there's something underneath it in the album and that's gonna finish up the story. So I have five things that I'm grateful for. I wrote a little bit about it. I'll read them to you at the end, but we're going to make um, a little mini interactive book thing and put it right here on this vellum to hold my stories for the day. So this idea is actually not my idea. Um, my friend Laura Lee, she's Rosie Posey Studio on Instagram if you're not already following her. Um, she had made this layout earlier in, I wanna say like in September, where she was documenting things that she'd received in the mail. And it was this really fun um, flip out thing where it folded in on itself and it was an envelope. And I thought it was the, coolest thing so I'm going to attempt to actually make something very similar to that so this is a 6 by 12 piece of paper I'm scoring it first at the um, three inch mark on the six inch side so on the, the narrower side and then I'm flipping it to the long side and scoring it at four and at you could score it at four and at eight um, but it's just easier for me to flip it and do four and at four so now I have um, six I have six pieces pretty much right like I have six pieces that are gonna house my story and so I'm going to go in and snip this up now um, I'm gonna do this by hand so I'm probably gonna regret it but I just need to cut slits right here and I can't talk in like cut so we're just gonna have to do this really quietly but I'm gonna cut the slit right here up until this point, and then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll have to see if this closes up in the book or if I'm gonna have to take off a little bit more um, so that they lay on top of each other. But pretty much the way it works is that's gonna fold in on this. Yep, I can already tell that I'm probably gonna have to um, shorten some of these edges so that they actually fold in on each other otherwise they're just going to be so that's going to fold in on that that looks okay what i'm worried about is oh that still looks okay actually what i think might be easier is to go in here first and then go in here and then have that flip up like that so here's what i'm concerned about see how like it's like fighting right here i think I'm gonna make these two top pieces a tiny bit narrow, more narrow. Narrower is a really tough word for me to say. So I tend to not say it. So I'm gonna make these two pieces a little bit more narrow. <laughs> narrower. It's one of those, like English is such a funny language. Joshua and I were talking about homonyms last night. Um, we're nerds, so yeah, there's that. Um, Joshua and I were talking about homonyms last night and how weird English as a language is. Um, and some of these words, like English is my native language, like I don't speak any other languages, but every now and then some of these words just get stuck in my mouth and I'm like, narrower, what is that? Okay, so I just trimmed off a tiny bit from each of those so that when this closes, this closes nicer, right? And so that is what the book is gonna look like. The book is gonna sit right here. Now, last year when I did a flip out element for my gratitude documenting, it was a lot wilder than this. This is a, a much more uh, flat and <laughs> sedate way of documenting gratitude. So that works for me. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm going to leave this as it is because we're gonna do some embossing because we did it with the, my thought process was since I embossed that giant five and that was so much fun, I was going to emboss the, um, 
the things that I'm grateful for, I might regret this, but <laughs> we'll see. So I have um, my mini Misty here, right here. So I have my mini Misty. I should have, I have everything except embossing powder. So I probably should grab that. I'm going to use the same rose gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp that I embossed that number five in. Um, so we're just gonna keep everything kind of uniform. So I have some vellum in my Misty and I find that the trick for embossing on vellum, I'm not going to make you watch me stamp and emboss all of these because that would be very boring. We're gonna do one and then I will stamp them all. I'll come back and then I'll heat set one so you can see it. But the trick I find for embossing on vellum is to make sure that your heat tool is really, really hot and work really, really fast. It works better if you're not, because otherwise you'll burn the vellum and it'll warp and everything else. So it works better um, if your heat tool's really hot and if you work really fast. Um, I'm using the Juniper, this is the regular uh, size. I use the Jumbo to stamp the five. And I really wanted to use the XL um, to stamp the words, but some of my words are seven letters long. Um, and so that's not gonna fit with the, uh, the, the XL. And honestly, I think the smaller size would probably look better on these anyway. All right, so we're just going to kind of position these where I want them and make a giant mess. Now I am cheating and I'm stamping the entire word at the same time because that makes stamping achievable for me um i you know i'll stamp individual letters like anybody else if i have to but if i can cheat and stamp the whole word at the same time i'm totally doing it all right that o is a little crooked that looks good all right so i have it in my misty drawer i've already prepped it I've already prepped this with my anti-static powder tool and i'm just going to use versamark ink versamark is the um embossing ink I've had the most success with these days. So that's what I'm sticking to. If it's not broke, I'm not fixing it. I went through several embossing inks when I was trying to figure out one that would work for me. I, like I literally tried, uh, I think I have like five or six embossing inks right now. So. so I'm stamping them down and then I'm going to take a look at the vellum just to make sure I can see that the the, the Versamark is, it is a clear ink so you can't see it. Um, but I can see it and I'm just taking a look at it to make sure that it is transferring okay, that there are no gaps. So now that I'm looking at it, there's a gap in that P. So I don't want to put embossing powder on it while there is a gap in that P, which is why I'm not going to record embossing all of these because you're just going to watch me stamp the same thing multiple times. We're just going to do this one so you can kind of see what you have to do to emboss in real time. That P and I are really struggling. I'm wondering if there's something on my stamp itself. Now, I would normally use a chamois for this type of thing, but I'm being gross today. There's something on that particular spot in the P that's stopping it from picking up ink. So I just kind of wiped it with my finger to see if that would like fix it. That did it, okay. So there was something on my, my stamp. That's why it didn't work. Now, I like to emboss with a coffee filter. I did not come up with this. Everybody's always like, this is such a clever idea. It's not my idea. It's something that Christina Warner did that I thought was a wonderful idea. Um, because then you can just collect your embossing powder. And I'm not like like a giant card maker where I have giant vessels of embossing powder. Mine just live in their bottles. All right, so we're gonna just pop this on. And there we go. Need a little bit more on top, perfect. Tap off that excess and there we go. So I'm going to do all the stamping and then I will, and then I'll heat set them. So I'm going to, when I'm ready to heat set them, I'm going to put my heat tool on for like five minutes before I go in to heat set them. That way I'm sure that my heat tool is nice and hot. Um, because like I said, when you're embossing on vellum, you don't want to play around with a heat tool that's not hot. Um, cause then you run the risk of warping and ruining your vellum. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp all of these and then I'll come back. Okay, so all of my embossing's done. Um, and in a few places, I did manage to overcook my embossing powder. Embossing on vellum's 
a little tricky, especially for me because I'm new to embossing. Um, like I couldn't see if the embossing powder was melted. So I left it on a little bit too long in a few places. So I did overcook my embossing powder. Um, that is not the embossing powder fault. That's user error. So um, the Simon embossing powders are great. I will say that I'm a really big fan of them. I have a bunch of the detail ones. Um, I have a bunch of the detail ones so they're really good for embossing like detail sentiments like this i'm going to go look for my crocodile so i actually have no idea where my crocodile went <laughs> i literally i just i don't know where it is um so we're just gonna do this the old-fashioned way and do these manually i am just attaching my journaling to the little title cards uh with a paper piercer and a star brad actually you know what this is not even a paper piercer my paper piercer i don't know where any of my supplies are today i'm gonna have to like clean up because that's the thing about working on december daily every day is i start to lose things because i'm not 100 percent putting things back where they belong and then when i need them i don't know where anything is <laughs> so i'm actually using like a pokey tool uh for like die cutting like a craft pick to poke out like all the extra bits that's what i was using to punch my holes but it worked out just fine and then the good thing about the stamper secret weapon is the back side of it is designed for paper piercing which is what i was using it for all right so i'm gonna grab one of my scotch so <laughs> I played around with the Kokuyo adhesives for a really long time. I just, they're not my jam. Um, I know Crystal and Heba love them, but they're just not my jam. So I'm going back to the Scotch ones, um, which is what I prefer using when I don't feel like wrestling with my ATG. I don't know if it's that I'm left-handed and I'm just not using. So the thing about being left-handed in a right-handed world is I don't think right-handed right -handed people appreciate um, how hard it is to navigate a right-handed world. And I don't know if it's just that, like I said, that dot runner is just designed for right-handed people. Um, I wanted to love it. It just wasn't a good fit for me. All right, so here's what I'm realizing now that I'm starting to stick these on. I actually have to trim these down. So I'm gonna have to take this off. Come off, please. These can't exactly be three by four or they won't like flip, like they won't do what they're supposed to do. So I am just going to grab my little guillotine and trim these all down. And I, it would have been nice to remember that I had to do this before I attach them. But it's also not the most like uh, terrible thing because then I can make sure that I'm trimming them, trimming the vellum and the cardstock equally. Let's see if that was enough. So I wanna put this on the edge. Okay, so that when it closes, it closes flat, perfect. Okay, that works. All right, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assemble the rest of my little booklet. Um, and then I'll come back, we will embellish it. I'm not doing much for embellishing. I'm going to um, figure out how to like put a cover. So I'm gonna, I'm, since I'm scrap lifting Lorelei, sorry, Lorelei, I'm gonna completely commit to scrap lifting her. So what she did was she like used, like it looked like an envelope flap and that's how she closed off her book. And I thought that was a really novel idea. So I'm literally just gonna commit to scrap lifting her completely because her design was amazing and there's just no reason for me to try to alter it because it looked really good. Um, and ah, that looks so good already, see, so that, the, and then the good thing about these being on brads is they can swivel whichever way I need them to so I can get to the story underneath. Um, and I'll read you my gratitude list because I always read my journaling, but I'm just gonna assemble this first um, and then we'll keep going from here. Okay, so to finish off this page, what I'm going to do, um, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, We Are Memory Keepers punch board and I'm gonna make an envelope for a three by four card which is hopefully the right size. I thought about doing the three and a three by four and a half, but I think the three by four card is going to be the way to go. So I'm gonna make an envelope for a three by four card using the punch board. If you've never used an envelope punch board, they're just, they're wonderful tools. Um, I use mine all the time because I like making envelopes. I like making like hidden journaling spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make the envelope, but I'm not going to use as an envelope. Um, I did not score that at all. Like I completely missed that score line. So I'm gonna, if this thing would cooperate, 
I would make the envelope, but I'm not going to use it. That doesn't even belong there. That's for my scoreboard. I'm not going to use it as the envelope because what I want, I just want it for this. So I'm going to actually take all of these sides off. Well, I would if I had scissors. I have scissors. Okay, so I'm actually going to just take all the sides off because like I said, I just want it so I can have a top flap, something to lift up so that I know that there's something underneath there. The, the thing is about making interactive albums is like years from now, am I going to remember every single place I'm supposed to pull, every single thing I'm supposed to lift? Like, am I gonna remember these things? So I like leaving myself little, little reminders. All right, so let's fold this bad boy back up. Now, I lied to myself when I was like, oh, this one's not gonna be as chunky as the one last year. It is not as chunky, to be, to be honest. It is not as chunky. It is still pretty thick once it's folded shut. Um, so one of these years, I will stop doing stuff like this for day five. Actually, never. I just, I really like having interactive bits of my album, so never. Um, and so that's gonna get adhered to that. And then I will put like some sort of Velcro or something on it so that when it's closed, it stays closed. Now, Laura Lee's was a lot neater than mine, um, probably because hers wasn't like eight layers of paper thick, um, but hers was a lot neater than mine. So I'm going to first trim this down to three. I'm gonna cut two three by four pieces, just so I'm using the same paper throughout. I like continuity. Um, I think it helps tie a design together. So I'm gonna cut two three by four pieces of this paper. One to go on the front side. Oh, wow. See, this is what happens when you overcook your embossing powder. Some of it transfers. Um, so I'm gonna put one on the front side of this. And you know what? You know what made this thing so thick? It was the star brads and the vellum and everything else. It wasn't just the cardstock journaling. Um, it was everything else I did to it. That's what made it so thick. So, note to self. No, actually not note to self because I like this stuff. So I'm just gonna keep doing it. Um, and this is why I end up with two albums every single year because I just I like the interactive things and I like dimension and I just cannot seem to help myself when it comes to that kind of stuff. All right, so, oh, I had that upside down. That would have been awful. Okay, so that is gonna go right on this. And it would be nice if I centered it so that the same amount of pink paper is showing on both sides. I don't mind that the inside of this is pink. It actually kind of works because I use rose gold. Now, I i don't know where my Velcro stickers are. So after I'm done with this, I will look for my Velcro stickers. But the Velcro sticker is going to keep this closed so that when this opens, this opens like this, this opens like this, this comes down, this opens like this, this opens like this. And I could read the five things that I'm grateful for. This extra piece is gonna go right in here. And actually this is probably, a little bit too wide. That extra piece is gonna go right in there and I will figure out some sort of um, embellishment. The, my embellishments are not next to me this year because they're in a huge case. Um, so they're actually like a couple feet away from me. And sometimes I remember to look for embellishments before I start filming and sometimes I don't. And then, so after I finish assembling, then I go, all right, what do I want to do as far as embellishing goes? And then I go and I rifle through my embellishments. So that's why like some of the videos I have the embellishment process figured out and some of the videos I don't cause I just don't have my embellishments next to me. So I will, again, I will, which way did I go? I went this way first. Um, I'm trying to just fold it the same way every single time so the paper learns which way it's supposed to go. Um, that way the creases help me figure out which way it's supposed to go. Okay, so there we go. So that's gonna go like that and then that will have some sort of Velcro closure. When I find my Velcro stickers, that is going to go right on top of this. I think that, that is so cute, shut up. All right, so we're just going to put some adhesive I'm going to use this scotch tape runner right now. If, as I flip through the album, I see that it's like not holding, I will switch to score tape. Um, Cause score tape is my favorite adhesive for like interactive elements that I want to kind of hang out and stand the test of time. Um, but for now, scotch tape runner it is. All right, and then so there it is. There's that little envelope. I'm gonna, 
I don't even have my chipboard. I had star chipboard here yesterday and I think I put it away when I was done. Um, so yeah, so that's my little envelope. I'm going to, again, put a Velcro sticker to hold it shut. I'll embellish it after the fact, but that is my day five page. I have this gratitude, I have this giant five. And then when you pull that up, that opens and you can read my gratitude list, which I think is super cute. And again, I use the same embossing powder and the same font to kind of tie that together, but I really like how that came out. All right, this video is long enough, um, but I'm gonna quickly read my journaling to you. So the first thing I wrote, well, this is not in any particular order. This is just the order that I stuck them down in, but I didn't write them in any particular order. I just made a gratitude list. So first off, I wrote that I was grateful for my nursing license. So I wrote, Dear nursing license, you have challenged me this year and I found myself unprepared, unwilling at times and sometimes completely unable to do what you required, paralyzed by fear, by anxiety, by my own pride and refusal to bend my neck when it was required. And this first year has just been an adventure rife with a few panic attacks, lots of tears in the bathroom, raging at Joshua when I arrived home from work at the unfairness of it all, growth, compassion, joy, exultation and a job well done and compliment after compliment. Compliment. Some days I wonder if I pick the right career and then a patient says something to me that takes me right back to why I chose you, why I worked for you and I'm right back in it, working hard to earn you every single day. And then I wrote uh, a little note to my one little word. Um, this is this video will air before our one little word episode comes out, but Crystal and I recorded a whole podcast episode about my one little word, about one little word and our words for 2021. And man, open was just a good word for me. So I wrote, dear open, you have been such a constant companion this year that December snuck up on me and the changing of the guard was imminent. And I found, I found myself unprepared to add you to the lexicon of words before you connect, linger, embrace, mindful. And we still have so much work to do together, even after all that we've accomplished this year. I am so very grateful that of all the words that could have been my guide and partner through this awful year, it was you that dropped in my spirit and stayed. And to Joshua, I wrote, it seems to go without saying that whenever I make a gratitude list, you will inevitably on it. But how could I not be grateful for my partner, for the other half of my heart, for the person I trust to help me hold it together when times are really tough? That was supposed to say tough. And now it says touch. Oh, well, <laughs> when times are really tough, this last stretch alone has proved how invaluable you are to me for the millionth time. And how could I not be grateful for the person who gives me breathing, breathing room to create art, but grabs me and grounds me when my head is in the clouds and I want to make at 4 a.m. instead of sleeping and you just get me. And if that is not the thing that deserves the ultimate gratitude, I don't know what does. And I've recently picked up weaving. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen lots of that. So I wrote, uh, dear weaving, it is so novel being a beginner again. I have been so adept at my particular art forms for so long that this ebb and flow of trying to figure things out, making mistakes, asking questions, flipping things, ripping things up and starting over is brand new and wonderful. And I find myself ignoring my back screaming for one more row of stitches, one more sumac with a bump of roving, one more twining stitch with 12 millimeter cotton. And even though everything I'm making right now is a present and will not stay in this space for long, it is such a joy touching the fibers and letting sit there for the time that they have and to my best girl crystal because obviously she ends up on my gratitude list so to my best girl crystal i wrote of all the dynamic duos in the universe i think ours is a superior outfit and i'm talking batman and robin eminem and dr dre Thelma and louise territory they have nothing on us and how we complement each other and filling the missing pieces pick up the slack throw out the ideas share the work and build our little scrapbooking empire together if i had to go into a factory to make the perfect partner she would be just like you a soft heart at the core with a hustle that matches mine, a mind for foresight and planning ahead, a wicked sense of humor and a devotion to make it happen. Thank you for being my partner in crime. So little love notes to the five things that I was grateful for in this season. Um, sometimes when I do this project, I just write five things that I was grateful for that day. Sometimes I look at it like wider that week, that month, that year. I think I wrote this for the week. Um, so my gratitude list, could, like if I did the same project tomorrow, my gratitude list might look completely different. But on day five, these were the five things that I was grateful for. So again, this video is, I'm gonna have so much fun editing this because this video is long enough. Um, but I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, I'm trying out a new microphone so I don't have to shout because the shouting um, so I could be heard was really starting to get to me. So just let me know what you think about the audio in this. It might not be great. I have no idea. Um, it might be perfect and we'll stick with it, but I'm just trying to make this an easier process for all of us. Um, so just let me know what you thought of the audio. So that's all I have for you today. Look, I just found my J stamp. I put all my stamps away and I missed my J. 
wild. That's all I have for you today, guys. Please keep your crafting. Have the best day, and I'll see you around for day six. Have a great one.